Hey everyone, welcome to the video. Let's go over the five game NBA slate for today on DraftKings. Before we continue, as always, if you guys could just leave a like and if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. Really appreciate it. You can also follow me on Twitter at crispinell 16 And if you're interested in the spreadsheet I build every single night for the NBA season, that's what I'm showing you right now. Links in the description below for my Patreon as well as my Discord chat. You get access to my entire data sheet that I use to help make these videos. So if you like the videos, you'll certainly like this. And I update it all the way up until lock so you get my most up-to-date information and projections. It's got the player info on here, the matchup columns, the Vegas totals, uh, the pace that the team plays at, the advanced statistics that I like to talk about on these videos, points per minute, PER, usage rate, all that good stuff, uh, offensive uh, box plus minus, defensive ratings, offensive ratings, so you can identify who's good defenders, who's uh, who's great on offense, I mean, things like that, uh, The just the kind of basic DraftKings stats per game, then I have projections at the very end, and also have my defense versus position chart, so you can easily identify good or bad matchups, like obviously if you're facing Atlanta and Cleveland, fantastic matchups if you're playing teams like Boston, Indy, Philly, those kind of teams. Pretty bad matchups in most cases. Then I also have my cheat sheet and my core plays that I update all the way up until lock. And then you also have my Discord chat as well. So if you're interested, like I said, links in the description below. And without further ado, let's get into today's slate. And I will pause this really quick and pull up DraftKings. All right, so let's get into it. This slate is not my most favorite in the world. It just, when I was going through it, some slates kind of jump off the page to me. And some really, some kind of don't. This one's kind of like a eh kind of slate, but... We'll start up top with Giannis. He comes in at 11,700, and I pretty much say the same thing every single time I bring up Giannis. He's always a good play if the game's competitive. Matchups really don't matter for the guy. The problem is he does not play a lot. I mean, and that's the problem because the Bucks are a really good team, and if they can get away with just keeping Giannis on the bench at the end of the game, playing with the lead, they don't want to bring him back out. They will keep him on the bench and rest him up. That's the problem. But he's a point-per-minute beast, though, so it's okay when he doesn't get, like, 35-plus minutes. That's a very rare occasion. I think he's only averaging, like, 30 minutes per game. But even so, when he's getting these small minutes, he can still go out there and ball out. The problem is he's really expensive, and if you're not going to play 30-plus minutes, that's kind of going to cap your upside. But 21 minutes versus New York, the guy still almost dropped uh, 60 fantasy points. 28 minutes versus Portland, he dropped 63. Sacramento was just a bad game. He shot the ball nine times. Just kind of one of those outlier bad games. But nonetheless, the guy's got. If he's if the game's competitive and he plays 35 plus minutes, he will he can score 80 fantasy points no problem. It's just what he can do. And matchup versus Boston, that's. I mean, it could be a game that stays competitive. I believe it's only a seven point spread right now, so you might get one of those. Uh, Giannis ceiling games now it's a very bad matchup but again I really don't care about matchups when it comes to Giannis because he's really going to be able to guard him there's no one on the there's really no one on the court that can guard him well and uh, yeah he's a point per minute god like I said 1.9 points per minute leads the league he's got near 40 percent usage rate nothing bad you can say about Giannis he's just not the best shooter in the world but he's fine he's been shooting some threes recently too he's actually three for five in the last game but you know, Boston can keep this game competitive. You might see a 70-plus point outing from Giannis. That's the problem, though. The games don't tend to be competitive a lot of times with the Bucks, but I think it's a 7-point spread versus the Celtics. So I wouldn't say he's not a core play for me. Uh, 11,700, you don't have to play him on the slate. But, I mean, if you want to spend up for him, you can. There is quite a couple, quite a few value options on this slate, but I don't think uh, Giannis is an absolute necessity. Uh, you could also look Kawhi's way with Paul George being out. He comes in at 10,100, and... You guys get the uh, you guys get the was it the routine at this point? I think that's the right word. But uh, he smashed versus Cleveland. He played he played uh, only 29 minutes, but he still had 61 fantasy points. Did not see the action in the fourth quarter, if I remember correctly. Had 43 real life points. Didn't really do much in the peripherals. Only three rebounds and four assists. Got a block and a couple of steals, but so 43 real life points. Had a great game. If he would if this game would have stayed competitive, it was actually competitive for a while, but. Started blowing them, out, blowing them out at the end of the game. Cleveland just couldn't hang. But if he would have saw 30, like, five minutes, man, Kawhi could have had, like, 75 fantasy points. He was just dominating uh, against Cleveland. And with George off, he's got a 37% usage rate, about 1.6 points per minute. Now, it's kind of a gross matchup versus Orlando. They play extremely slow. I believe they're the slowest-paced team in the NBA. And they're okay defensively, but when you take off a superstar, when you take a superstar like Paul George off the court and you only have one superstar left, I say only, but, uh, you know, Kawhi's just going to dominate on the court, so I don't mind him at 10,100. I'd probably rather play Kawhi over Giannis. Just take that savings right there. 
He also looked Jokic's way. So Gary Harris, I believe last time I looked, he was still listed as out. I would assume he's probably questionable. But And then you also have Ajamal Murray off the court. So And he finds himself in a nice spot here versus Golden State's soft defensive unit. I will say they're actually okay versus big men, but they've allowed monster games to centers all season. So I really don't have a concern for a guy like Jokic. We know he's a nightly uh, triple-double threat every single night. He's got an elite passing ability, rebounding points. You guys, you get it. So he's got 70 point, uh, he has 70 point upset every single night is what I'm trying to say. And with Jamal Murray off the court and Gary Harris, which Gary Harris really doesn't affect too much, but Jamal Murray does for sure. He's at 1.5 points per minute with a 31.5% usage rate. So he gets about a point, point 0.1 uh, bump in points per minute and about like 6% usage. So Nikola Jokic, I think he's a very solid option versus Golden State at only 9,600. You could certainly look his way. Although I tend to not play Jokic a lot, but maybe that's a my own problem. But anyway, Rudy Gobert, he's a little bit overpriced here. I don't like paying 9200 for Rudy Gobert. He did smash in the last game versus Brooklyn. It was a good matchup. He played, played 37 minutes, 18 boards, 22 points, almost had a 20-20 game. Now he gets a pretty good matchup versus New Orleans, but it looks like... Uh, What's his name right? Uh, Derek Favors is going to be back in for this game, so he's one of their better defenders. Better defenders, so that does make it a little bit of a tougher matchup. But I really don't think he can contend with Rudy Gobert. But I still think he's a little bit overpriced. Does he have 50 point upside? Yes, he's been pretty good the past four games: 56 points, 47, 48, 47. But at 9,200, I'd rather just drop down to some of the cheaper plays. So I'm probably gonna have to pass on Rudy Gobert. Uh, Devin Booker's been hot, but he's 9K. Now, I know Kelly Oubre's off the court, and with Kelly Oubre off the court, Booker has a 31.5% usage rate, 1.21 points per minute, but 9K is a lot to pay for a guy that's... I don't know. I mean, the guy's got upside, but he's a little hit or miss. I mean, 38 minutes versus Charlotte, 31 points. 55 versus Atlanta, that was a fantastic matchup. And he's actually been a little hot besides that bad game versus Charlotte. 51, 51, 51, 44, 50, 54, 44. But, man, I just do not like paying that much for Devin Booker. I'll pay 8K for him, but 9K you're starting to push a little bit. So, personally, I'm probably going to pass on Devin Booker. But just know he's been hot, and he definitely has upside. But I don't, I don't, I just don't think I can pay that much for him. Uh, let's see. Brandon Ingram. So I guess I'd rather play Brandon Ingram. Probably he's 8,400 and he's you know, he's cheaper. And he is probable for this game. He does have the questionable tag. But he is probable. And yeah, I'd rather play Brandon Ingram over Devin Booker, I'd say. So and the, Pelicans, the, Pelicans, the Pelicans are getting some starters back, including Ingram and Derek Favors. And Drew Holiday, I believe, is still out. And J.J. Redick is questionable as of right now. But a couple starters coming back in the lineup. And uh, Brandon Ingram is pretty much a safe bet for like 40 points with upside of more every single time he's on the court. Only had 30 points last time versus Boston, but they also got blown out, so it's not really a fair comparison. But if you look at his most recent games, 51, 61, 56, 32, 33, 46, 44, 51, 45. Pretty darn solid if you ask me. He's been playing very well, too. He's had quite a few 50-point games mixed in there. He also had a 61-point game versus Chicago. So we can certainly look his way. And he actually just uh, most recently on January 6th, he dropped uh, 56 fantasy points versus the same Utah team in 39 minutes. So I think Brandon Ingram's fine here, 8,400. Now, the matchup's not great, but he should be fine either way. This game is a solid 222.5 point total on it. He's at 1.3 points per minute with a 30% usage rate on the season. And he's playing big minutes, so 8,400 is not a bad price for a guy like Brandon Ingram. We can certainly look his way in all formats. So moving on here, uh, Julius Randle, he comes in at 8K, and I actually think he's a pretty solid play. Now, he does feel a bit pricey here. In the last three games, he was 73, 77, 75, but he has been playing pretty well, and if you extend that down a little bit, 39, 48, 61, 47, 50, 33 is a little rough, but he's been playing pretty well, but this is expensive for 8K you know, for Julius Randle. It doesn't feel great, but I do like this buy here versus Phoenix. He scored no less than 35 fantasy points since December 21st, so he's been pretty solid and safe. And we get a nice matchup versus Phoenix, like I said. Pace up spot here, too. Knicks are 19th in pace of play, and the Suns are 10th, so it's not drastic, but it's still a nice pace up spot. And Phoenix is bottom 10 versus Big Men, and he's at 1.13 points per minute on the season, 27% usage rate. I think he's a fine play. I do feel like I'm overpaying a little bit, and if you had to, I'd rather just. Sorry, my, dog. my dog's on my lap. He's growling. I don't know why. But if you want to pay an extra 400 for Brandon Ingram, I think that's probably the better route to go. Because, I mean, 
If I had to bet on someone scoring 50 points between either Brandon Ingram or Julius Randle, I'm taking Brandon Ingram every single time, but I still think they're both okay options. Uh, let's see, scrolling down a little bit. Jason Tatum, so I know he was... I have not gotten an update yet. The last update was January 15th, and it said he was out for Wednesday, but I had to assume he's questionable for tonight. I could probably look that... I will look that up again. I, I want to make sure before I start talking about some other Celtics. So I, I went on Twitter, did some searching. I could not find anything on his status for today. If he is out, we'll talk about that. I also know Jalen Brown is also questionable, so we'll go over that, but uh, but I don't believe we're going to hit Kemba until we talk about Donovan, Donovan Mitchell. So I want to talk about Donovan Mitchell first here, and I actually think he's one of the best plays on the slate, in my opinion, at 7400 This price has come down a little bit, which I do like, and if I can buy low versus New Orleans, I will certainly do so if you are a guard because they suck versus guards. So Donnie Mitchell, don't typically play the guy, but I'll take him in a in a buy low spot versus New Orleans. And also, we get a huge pace up spot here. Utah is 27th in pace of play, and they'll be playing New Orleans, who is 5th in pace of play in New Orleans. So I should, I would expect them to push the pace here. And elite matchup. They rank 30th versus point guards. 30th. So matchup doesn't get any better than this for Donovan Mitchell. He's got a 30.7% usage rate. He's at 1.13 points per minute on the season. I mean, I think this is one of the best plays on the slate. 7,400 is not that expensive to fit in. And if you want to game stack this up a little bit, you could go Brandon Ingram running back with Donovan Mitchell. I think that's one of the better ways to go on this slate. But for sure, Donovan Mitchell, one of my favorite plays on the entire slate. Does great out as a very good option. And Kemba Walker. So I played a lot of Celtics last night. I played Kemba. I played Jalen Brown. I played Daniel Tice. And I, well, I thought I played Gordon Hayward, but I guess I didn't. I was thinking there was another Celtic I played. I wish I played Gordon Hayward, but... Uh, yeah, Kemba, he was the one that sucked, and I have a lot of bad luck with Kemba, and he's been playing pretty rough the past four games, 36, 36, 26, 28. It doesn't make sense either. You know, he gets good matchups, and guys are out for Boston, and he just he doesn't come through for me ever. But if Jason Tatum happens to miss again, the numbers would suggest he should be a smash play. 1.37 points per minute, 32% usage rate. And if Jalen Brown's out and Jason Tatum, I mean, you'd have to probably look Close to at least maybe close to lock button in Kemba because he's at 7,300. Again, we'll have to wait on some injury news, but just know he'd definitely be in play if one of these Celtic starters happens to miss the game or even both. Uh, Chris Middleton, I'll probably pass right there. Lou Williams, he gets a bump with Paul George being out, but 6,900 for, for him versus Orlando. Not a ton of interest, but the guy's got like a 30% usage rate, over 1.2 points per minute. You could certainly look his way at 6,900. The price came down a bit. Uh, Jamal Murray's out. Will Barton's fine at 6,800, but that just feels a little bit expensive for Will Barton. So like I said, Jalen Brown's also questionable for the Celtics. He smashed last night. He pretty much played the whole game, so I'm not really sure when he got his injury. He must have just played through it. Had a right thumb sprain, but he balled out. 12 rebounds, 24 points. If he's out... And Jason Tatum's out, bumps to Gordon Hayward, Kemba Walker, you know, just other starters on the Celtics. But again, I have no idea. I mean, he played through the game, so I he might be able to play through it, but I'm not totally sure. But it is a nice pace-up spot versus Milwaukee. They are top three in pace of play. Pretty good defensive team, but still it's a nice pace-up spot, which I do like. Uh, Gordon Hayward, he'd become a pretty solid play if... Either one of those guys are out. He had a good game last night. 25 points, 7 boards, 32 minutes, at 38 fantasy points. Had a very good game. If any of those guys are out, we could probably become close to lock-buttoning them. Especially 6,400 for Gordon Hayward, so you definitely have to be on your radar. Let's see, scrolling down a little bit. I don't like a lot of these guys. Derek Favors, so he's at 5,900, and he is probable for this game, so we should expect him to be a full go. And besides the last game where uh, he didn't really play, he had 11 minutes, uh, He's been pretty okay recently, 24, 31, 31, 45, 36, 36, 42, 37. Not bad for a guy of this price range. And they dropped his price all the way down to 5,900, which is the cheapest he's been since December 25th on Christmas, I believe. So we can buy low on a guy like Derek Favors here. Now, this is not the best matchup in the world, but they're going to need Favors out there to contend with Rudy Gobert because he's pretty much their best defender, so I expect his minutes to be maybe like... 28 minutes if we're lucky, maybe push to 30 if he's playing well. And he's really good on a point-per-minute basis for his price range. 1.14 points per minute, 
And Utah is a good defensive team, but they actually do struggle a bit versus centers. They, I mean, not like they're not a bad team versus centers, but just like comparatively to how good they are versus other positions, they do struggle a bit with centers. So Derek Favors on my radar at 5,900 does great. That was an okay point per dollar option. Uh, let's see, scrolling down a little bit. Um, Markel Foles, he balled out last night. He had a triple-double, 11 rebounds, 10 assists, 21 points, 55 fantasy points. He balled out. And you can certainly look his way. DJ Augustine's out. Uh, Michael Carter-Williams is out. Obviously, you know, Isaac Fournier was... He missed last night's game. He was a game-time decision. I'm not sure if he's going to end up playing tonight or not. But if even if, if he's out as well, his price actually came down. Obviously, the price didn't came out before he got a triple-double. But you'd, you'd have to look his way versus the Clippers. It's not the greatest matchup in the world versus the Clippers. But, it, I mean, it's a pace-up spot. And he, I mean, he's going to just have to take on so much of this offense with all these injuries. So you could certainly look his way. Is he going to get a 55-point triple-double again? No. But I think he'd be a safe bet for over 30 about 30 fantasy points, if not more, and that's not too bad at 5,500. So we could certainly look his way. And for all the game log watchers, he might he'll probably carry some ownership today as well. You also look at Elf Payton versus Phoenix. He's not a guy I really like to play, but only played 19 minutes in the last game. But again, that game got out of hand. But past the two games prior, 31 minutes and 33 minutes at 41 points, 26 points. He does a little bit of everything: rebounds, assists, steals, points. Not a huge score, but he can do a little bit of everything, which gives him a nice floor. I think he can get you 25 to 30 points here versus Phoenix. It's a nice pace-up spot. And Phoenix is 22nd versus point guards, point per minute guys. So I think he's fine if he's going to get about 30 minutes. Uh, Marcus Smart would benefit a little bit with uh, Brown or Tatum or both if they happen to miss this game. I don't know if they updated anything for Reddick yet. Nope, just questionable. So that would be a bump to Josh Hart if he happens to miss. Uh, let's see. Where is Josh Hart? Speaking of Josh Hart, he is 4,800, so you could look his way. He'd, you know, he'd be in line for another minutes he's been seeing recently. He had 36 minutes in the last game, 33, 37, 33. At 27 versus Utah, but he also got into foul trouble that game. But he's been okay, not great, but 23, 21, 32, 28. Those two games were pretty good, but 21, 23 is not going to cut it. But I mean, it's a tough matchup versus Utah, but he'll get 30-plus minutes. He's been about 0.9-ish point per minute guy with – J.J. Redick off the court and Drew Holiday. He's okay at 4,800. I wouldn't talk you out of Josh Hart. Just know he's kind of more of a boring play. Let's see. Paul Mills snap. I'm pretty sure he's still out. Well, again, we don't have a lot of updates yet, but we'll have to see how that goes. But anyway, one of the best plays on the slate, in my opinion, is Monty Morris here. He comes in at 4,400, and I absolutely love him. I would pretty much call him a core play. And we so we have a couple of good value options on Denver with Jamal Murray being hurt, uh, Gary Harris being hurt. And with both of them off the court, Morris has a 20% usage rate and is at .92 points per minute, and he gets an elite matchup here versus Golden State, who ranks 20th versus point guards. And he should get close to 30 minutes, so I think he's pretty much a lock for about 23-plus fantasy points tonight versus Golden State, 4,400. I think he's one of the best plays on the slate. You also look at Mikel Bridges here at 4,500. So Kelly Oubre is going to be out tonight, and that's going to be a bump for a guy like Bridges. I would expect him to get close to 35 minutes tonight, and he played really well in the last game. He had 33 minutes, 34 fantasy points. I'd expect him to go at about 35 again tonight, and he's a low usage rate guy. He's only at 12% usage rate with Oubre off the court, but still nearly at 0.8 points per minute. And at 4,500, and if you're going to see 35 minutes, I think you can pay off your salary pretty easily. So Mikel Bridges... Certainly on my radar. We can also look at another Denver Nugget Denver Nugget in Michael Porter Jr. here. He comes in at 3600 which is not a bad price tag whatsoever. I expect him to get about 25, 28 minutes, something around there. And he played really well in the la- in versus Charlotte in the last game where he saw 28 minutes, 37 fantasy points, had 8 boards, 19 points. He did bust this chalk versus Dallas, but willing to forgive him here. Some guys are out, so he definitely gets a bump here. He's got a 23% usage rate with both of those guys off the court. 1.06 points per minute, so over a point per minute guy. If he gets about 25 plus minutes tonight, I think he's pretty much a safe bet to hit value at 3,600. So, one of the better plays on the entire slate. And if you want to go about min price, you could look at Cameron Johnson. He comes in at 3,100. And again, he just gets a bump with Kelly Oubre being off the court. So, I have him for about 25 minutes tonight. That's what he saw in the last game. Only a 17% usage rate, but he's at .77 points per minute with him off the court. So you can certainly look Cameron Johnson's way. I have no problems with that at all. 
that's pretty much everyone I, want, everyone I want to talk about. So I hope this video was helpful, guys. If it was, remember to leave a like. And before I get, before I forget, if you guys want another site to play some fantasy on, it's not as complicated as DraftKings. You can check out OverlayDFS.com. It's just a simple pick 'em website. It, the, I haven't seen the matchup columns yet, but it'd probably be something like Giannis versus Kawhi. Whoever you think gets the most fantasy points, you pick them. And if you, if you pick Giannis and he happens to outscore Kawhi, you win that matchup. It's as easy as that. You pick 12 matchups. And if you're in the top 10% of the scoring, you will win nine extra money. So if you enter the $22 double deuce, which I like to do almost every single night, you will win 180 bucks. And if you happen to go 12 and 0 on your picks, you will win the jackpot, which is over $5,000 as of right now. And if you happen to lose, it's a, it sounds crazy, but if you happen to lose 20 days in a row, they will refund every single dollar you deposited. So they're pretty much daring you guys to lose 20 days in a row. So if you want to check out OverlayDFS.com, there's no promo code or anything that I have that you need to enter. You can just sign up and play. It's a pretty fun site, and it's very easy to understand. There's no salary cap restrictions. Just pick your favorite plays, and if you need help picking those players, you can use my projections on my spreadsheet. That's what I use to pretty much pick every single night. I just go through my projections, and if I, if I find the guys that I have the biggest edges on, like sometimes there's only like a point three difference on the edges uh, for the player differences but sometimes I get like five point edges and those are the guys I will target because you don't there's not only like 12 people you pick from you have to pick from those people there's actually a pretty long list of people and you just pick your favorites out of those ones so if you want to check it out check out overlaydfs.com not a lot of action over there so hopefully we can get it we can get some more action over there to make it more fun and more competitive so uh, check it out if you have if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Wish you guys the best of luck. Check out these spreadsheets if you want in the link in the description below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.